duck and cover. Hello and welcome to Surviving Classical Music. I'm Andrew Byrne. Today I'm speaking with Callie Laughlin, a clarinetist based out of Chicago, Illinois. Callie is principal clarinet of the Racine Symphony Orchestra, a member of the Lake Effect Clarinet Quartet, and produces regular educational videos on clarinet playing and repertoire on her YouTube channel. Callie, thanks for joining me today. Hi, Andrew. Thank you so much for having me. Kelly, can you tell us about the history of your YouTube channel? Yes, of course. Um, so, <clears throat> okay, the history. I'll start from the beginning. So, um, back when I was a, a recent college grad, I, I got a job in downtown Chicago. It was the only job I could I could get. Right? Um, it was like 2000. 12 2000 yeah it was 2012 and i was a concierge and i i um i did this job for a couple of years while trying to figure out what to do with my life and you know piece together teaching and gigs and taking auditions and things like that and one day i was sitting on the l and <clears throat> youtube had had at that time they were doing a big push to try to get more creators on on youtube and i saw i was on this l car um riding to work and i saw all of these posters like youtube fo posters and one of my favorite like makeup artists was on there and i was like i could do that i should do that for clarinet i need to i need to start making videos and that's been kind of um a weird hobby of mine since I was a kid and I, I never really had much equipment to work with. Um, I had like access to like a, a camcorder with like VHS tapes and stuff and my friends and I we would make goofy videos and things so I was like I should I should try my hand at this. I have I have a, a, a camera that or a digital camera that that takes like decent enough video and I have my little zoom recorder um, <coughs> So I decided to start making videos, and the first video I made was Clarinet Embouchure Checklist. And um, <clears throat> at the time, I had I had some friends who um, in in Van, the Van Doren Reed Making Company uh, who took notice of it, and they were like, "Hey, we want to share this on our uh, website and do a transcription of the Clarinet Embouchure Checklist." So that. Um, that was picked up maybe a, a month after I, after I uh, published it, and since then I I've been making videos. Well, between that time and like a year ago, I had made maybe a handful of videos um, over the years, and. <clears throat> So um, that was really helpful, and I got a pretty good following um, just from that and the following videos. And about a year ago, you know, in, in case you, those of you listening, um, <laughs> if you uh, if you if you didn't know, um, a pandemic hit, and so Chicago went into lockdown in March of 2020. And um, I was like, this is my chance. I am going to, I'm going to make my YouTube channel something and i decided to start just posting every week and i have posted every week since march of 2020 um up to up to this point and um and since then my channel has grown and i've i've basically stuck to um a, a formula of just posting clarinet educational videos just um like I'll pick an excerpt of like an etude or something and give viewers a few tips on um, various aspects of clarinet playing and pedagogy. And um, every so often I'll do like product reviews or I'll play some repertoire, but I, I mainly try to give viewers something that they can practice on their own, um, whether it's something they can download on their own in public domain or an excerpt that I have and, and then you know, just give a few tips. So I try to, I try to keep the videos short and concise when possible. But yeah, that's pretty much pretty much it for uh, the history of my YouTube channel. <laughs> so what I see when I look at your channel, I see now, of course, you know, weekly videos going back more than a year, right? So there's there's just this massive volume of of stuff that you've got up there where you've got, I mean probably averaging just under a thousand views every 
every video, you know, like if, when you look at all of it. So we're looking at, but to me, this is impressive because it's hyper specific, you know, that you, you really, what I see is that you, you stuck to your formula. You didn't do some things which were maybe like, um, trying to get the attention of people who wouldn't be interested in your channel in general, if you know what I mean. And, and so what I see is that you've developed, a, a like a, a follow, a core following of people who are actually really specific, uh, specifically interested in what you do, you know, and how you can help them. How has the interaction with those people been over this time? Because of course I haven't looked at every video and looked at comments and that sort of thing. Doing videos like this, um, you know, like you said, you get a very specific following and people who are interested in clarinet and getting better at clarinet. And, and while I do have a few outliers, um, teachers and performers of clarinet and other, other instruments, um, it's mainly people who play clarinet. And um, because the following is, is, is very small and very specific, I, I feel like I actually have a more personal connection with the viewers. And so I'll see a lot of the same people commenting on the videos every week. Um, they'll log in and watch the premiere of the videos. Um, many of them become patrons of my YouTube channel. And, um, and a lot of, and not a lot of them, but some of them um, actually end up taking lessons with me um, for a period of time as well. And, and so I feel like, I feel like I kind of have, um, you know, kind of like a, a studio that extends uh, beyond, you know, my immediate vicinity of Chicago and and kind of all over the world. And it's been it's been really special having a more personal connection with the people who watch the videos. Mm. Okay, so you've almost answered my next question, but I, I'd like to get a little bit more in detail here. When when you started, you know, when we got to the week to week videos, you know, since March 2020, did you feel like there was actually more that you had to overcome in terms of whether it was tech, whether it was time management? Um, did it actually become at some point overwhelming? Absolutely. Um, I would say in the first six months, it was really difficult to keep that uh, that schedule going and in the beginning I had I had a camera it was it was it was a really old Canon bridge camera and it took pretty good video but it would take so long to set up <laughs> the the recording um, the settings and everything and I found myself spending more time on you know setting that up and just getting frustrated with it um, so I finally eventually I finally took the plunge. Actually, no, I dropped it and it broke. So I had to take the plunge. I had no choice. Um, <laughs> and I, I ended up buying a new camera. Um, yeah, so I used the, the G7X Mark II and it, it's a great camera because I just, I have it, I have it set to where I could just, you know, turn it on and go. And um, so that helped out a lot, but just motivation and um, it was, in the beginning, it was a lot easier to find time I had I had tons of time on my hand because you know gigs were gone and like I didn't really know what to practice for but I this the the channel gave me something to practice for right um, mentally it was a little bit of a challenge at the beginning um, to kind of get started but um, it's it, it definitely has become easier and I've kind of uh, developed a flow of um, of recording and 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 things like that would you say that your YouTube channel now has changed your career? Um, I don't know if it has changed my career. It has definitely given me some more options. Um, part of the reason why I started the channel was so that I could have a creative outlet that is, that's all mine, that I can do whatever I want with choose whatever I want to do with it and share whatever I feel like um, at the, you know, in, in the moment, whatever I want to do. And so um, I want to try to keep it that way and, and keep it, you know, 
that that special place that I can I can do whatever I want with. Um, but I've I've certainly um, come up with many more ideas of things I can do with um, an online presence, all of which will require more time and energy and work. Um, but I think at this time, um, it's still um, it's still just another part of um, a, a career path, I guess, that I'm, I'm kind of going on. You have a Patreon account associated with your channel. Tell us what you offer through that. For Patreon, I have, I have four different levels and uh, the $3 level is, is just a basic like, you know, hey, I want to support you and um, just say thanks for whatever you're doing. So I kind of look at that as like, like the tip jar. So um, what I do for all of my patrons, including, you know, the $3 level is I share the video link directly to Patreon and whatever excerpt PDF directly to Patreon. And um, so that way, you know, the patrons just have it right there ready to go. So I usually do that ahead of time, sometimes just a few hours before the video comes out, um, but ideally the day before it comes out at least. Um, and let's see, so that's the $3 level. The $10 level um, is, is um, you get the same benefits, but I do a once a month coffee chat coffee chat with all my patrons on a Saturday morning and we usually do there's either um, a topic that we uh, all kind of vote on um, so like one month we talked about working on reads one month we talked about preparing a recital repertoire and another we talked about um, different levels of solo literature um, for you know beginner through advanced and um, and that's offered to patrons ten dollars or above the twenty five dollar level you get the the um, monthly coffee chat but you also get to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me once a month and then the seventy dollar level it's it's similar but the one-on-one -on -one meeting with me is uh, a longer longer in duration and so um, yeah, I have a pretty good following and I offer yearly memberships now too, which has become popular. So they just pay once and they're a member for the whole year. So you now have 50 people roughly who are involved in Patreon and it kind of goes back to my, what we had, I had asked you about comments about interactions. So, I, so what you seem to offer, it's, it's sort of open-ended from what I see that you, you say like, you're basically booking time with me. Um, and I suppose you, you you know, whatever that person needs is what is what you're giving during that time. Would that be right? Yeah. So some patrons, they, um, you know, if 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 we're doing the the you know one on one meeting, some patrons will have an excerpt and they just want to play it for me, and they'll um, they'll just ask for feedback, and um, others will, um, you know, a lot a lot of a lot of my followers are um, kind of self taught clarinet players and so um, they don't necessarily want to commit to like taking lessons with somebody every week and and follow a rigid schedule they kind of enjoy figuring things out sort of on their own and so um, the some of the patrons all they want to do is just know that they're like kind of on the right track so they're like okay I'm working out of this excerpt or this etude book and doing this clarinet method, can I just play a few things? And if you hear anything, let me know. So it's kind of like just checking in and being part of their uh, their journey that they're kind of, you know, in charge of. So since this Patreon account is, has flourished, let's say, has this now become a significant portion of your weekly routine or monthly routine rather? Like, is this taking up actually quite a chunk of your time? Not really. Um... It's, I mean, the, the, the monthly coffee chat takes, you know, one hour um, a month and maybe a couple of hours or so to, depending on what the topic is, to prepare and get things ready. Um, and the the one-on-one -on -one meetings are, you know, they're not really long, they're just 15-20 minutes long and 
you know, it's just like scheduling lessons. So at this point, um, I don't have enough people at the one-on-one -on -one meeting levels to really say that it's taking up a huge chunk of my time, um, but it's been fine, I guess, yeah. So let's now think about the whole package, right? You've got the U weekly YouTube video production. You've also got now these further commitments regarding the Patreon account. If we go back to February 2020 or January 2020 or Christmas time, whichever is the busy season, let's say, uh, for you, if you take that schedule and then you add this on top, is that still a doable thing? Yes, and I'm, I'm kind of dealing with that now because um, things around here are are opening up, things are happening, gigs are coming back in, and, and I'm teaching in person again in schools. And so um, the past, I don't know, I thought I was doing great. Um, like early in September, I was like, I'm, I'm barely tired at all. I'm doing all this stuff and I'm posting on YouTube. And then like the end of, the end of September, I was just like, there was a week where I was just like, I'm tired. Why am I so tired all the time? Um, but I think I think it is doable. I think the the thing um, I have to do is just plan ahead and just spend instead of recording one video and then posting, just record a bunch of videos in one day whenever things are slow and um, and then try to edit them before you know things get busy and then just have you know have them kind of ready to go before before things get crazy but i think it is doable and i go through waves of becoming very obsessed with how i with, with how much time i'm spending on whatever work task um when you're working from home as you know it can become you know when when are you working when are you not i don't know um so i i started tracking my my hours on clockify just any any task i would do related to work um and so i i try to keep it within you know a reasonable amount of time each week including practice time and and um and all, all of all of the things teaching practice youtube video recording youtube editing and patreon and all of that as well so um actually tracking the the hours I spend has helped a lot in managing time. Has your self-image changed since developing this core following, or even looking looking now at your YouTube channel and and you know scrolling so far down uh, with so many videos that you've done over this over this time? So self-image, like, what do you what do you mean by that? So I I mean it is in the sense of, you know, you someone might think if they have quote unquote nothing to show for themselves you know being a performer once you once you leave the stage the music is finished you know it's it's gone um however some people you know they've got a uh, bookshelf full of CDs that they've recorded and the, and they somehow look at themselves as if they've they've done something you know like that they are a quote unquote successful artist or whatever and i wonder if having developed the following number one just having an interaction with people who tell you that they appreciate what you're doing and continue to come back to ask for your advice that in itself could change how you see yourself or maybe you it didn't um or in this case where you've actually produced a large volume of educational material um whether that whether actually seeing that you have done that has changed um your own self-perception? I would say that uh, my confidence has definitely increased over, especially over the past year and a half. And in my ability to both um, communicate pedagogical ideas effectively and concisely, but also in my ability as a performer and player as well, um, I often joke that one of the hardest things you can do is record yourself playing a bunch of etudes. It's, they're, they're so, they're so hard. And, um, you know, so I've definitely improved in, in that sense and thought like, yeah, I guess, I guess I'm doing okay. I do feel like I've 
started to create something of, I don't know, this is, these are big words, but legacy, uh, because this is something that will be with me for the rest of my life and that I'll have for the rest of my life. And um, I think it'll help bring in more opportunities in the future and uh, as, you know, for my career and also, you know, to teach and play and, and help people. Have you gotten any feedback from your, from colleagues who you like actually know in person? about what you're doing yeah um so my 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 friends like immediate friends as in like my clarinet quartet um uh you know they're teachers too or at least two of them are and you know if there's a, a concept that they're working on with a student they'll say well why don't you watch callie's video on this too because she may say in a different way than i do and maybe it'll it'll help and i do have i, I have had a uh, I have made some connections um, over, um, you know, Instagram and YouTube and 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 Facebook and everything as well. And uh, who will, uh, you know, they'll log in and they'll watch the videos and they'll comment and they'll be like, "Oh, I'm a teacher around here too. This is a, a different way to teach this concept, and I think I'll try it and see," which is really exciting um, to just share a different perspective. Uh, that that may help you know a kid who thinks a different way get something under their fingers or under their belt you know when we were writing each other to schedule this interview the first time um, you had told me that YouTube has been your most useful medium um, compared to Instagram where you also have a significant following um, do you want to just elaborate on that for us yes um, okay so Instagram, I'm not really sure what to do with Instagram. I, I started, I started with these grand ideas of like, oh, I can make funny little videos and like, oh, you know, relatable things like this is a bad read and make a funny face. I don't know. And, uh, and then I was like, okay, YouTube is enough work. I, I don't really have enough mental energy right now to devote to making videos for Instagram. Also, the problem with Instagram is that that content isn't monetized, even though it you do get it. So this is what I compare Instagram to. It's like, you know, if you go in, if you if you're like, think of like old timey marketplaces where everybody is out looking at all the vendors and all the vendors are like, look at my thing. Here's what I'm doing. And um, that's kind of how I feel like Instagram is. And, and in order to stand out, I feel like you have to be doing something really exceptional or funny or very different uh, than the others so that because the value in that is just like people sharing and uh, whatever it is that you're posting. And so I, I do have a, a pretty good following, I guess, um, for a clarinet lady, um, but I, I don't think my content is particularly interesting or, or, or whatever to, to the viewers, um, aside from posting pictures of my cat. And, <laughs> and every so often, you know, I'll have, you know, something about like my, my YouTube channel or Facebook group um, you know, anything like that. So, um, so that's why I thought, okay, maybe, maybe the YouTube channel might be a little bit more interesting because I've actually devoted a little bit more, um, intentional work toward that. Would you say that Instagram is so it's, it's going for an immediate quick high, you know, that you can post a lot of content or you can post something which you put a lot of effort into, but once it's no longer the first thing that you've the, the most recent thing that you've done, it's sort of lost. Um, whereas in YouTube, there's there's definitely, and I'm, and you see, well, I don't know if this has actually happened or um, to you, but it certainly happened to me on, on my YouTube channel, where videos which are like year old are accumulating views um, or have been this entire time. And it wasn't just, you know, I got 600 people who watched it on day one and then nobody after the fact. Whereas anything on Instagram, I nobody likes anything of mine after 24 hours. So is that is that sort of part of it? Yes, absolutely. I mean, yeah, it's, it's like Instagram, you just, you really have to be on top of it and you have to be constantly like, 
well, like I said, you have to be like constantly shouting at everybody to pay attention to you. And uh, whereas like, I think on, and which is, which is great and entertaining. And that's why I go on Instagram because there are things that are new every day that are being posted. Um, it's just exhausting or the thought of that is exhausting to me, but who knows, maybe one of these days I'll get down to it and, and make the Instagram worthwhile but yeah on youtube it's like um and kind of what i'm trying to do is you know people go onto google and they'll say why does my clarinet sound spitty today and you know my video will come up from last year because nobody likes to sound spitty on clarinet and so it's like youtube is always working for you <laughs> and you'll get new followers and views even i mean my every every year clarinet embouchure checklist goes to the top of my uh view list because um right around this time of year because school's starting and band directors are using it to help teach their kids um how to how to do their face <laughs> very good um excellent if there was one thing that you could tell a potential youtuber who's a musician, um, if there's one thing that you could tell them that was a piece of advice for someone um, who could use, you know, the advice of uh, veteran uh, music channel uh, producer, what, what piece of advice would you give? I would say, uh, number one, it doesn't matter if you're, if you're like, you know, famous or whatever. If you have something that you really want to share, you, you should just do it and and the, the following will come. Um, I, you do need to have really good audio. Um, most most uh, smartphones now take great video in HD. So all you have to do is get like, I have a cheap little $100 Zoom H1 handy recorder that I spent $100 on in like 2009. And I still use that for my YouTube videos. Um, and, and you can just sync that with your video in an iMovie and it takes like two seconds to do and that will automatically make your videos just look and sound better. And, and then the other thing is um, <clears throat> if you can post on a regular basis and get somebody with a much larger following than you to notice and share your content, then you'll have kind of a jump start in the beginning. So I was really lucky that Van Doren took like notice of what I was doing from the beginning and they've helped me out a lot over the years every so often. They just shared, I did a review video of Ligatures a couple weeks ago and they, they shared that and um, it's been, that's been really helpful. So I would say, you know, post your content, keep it consistent, make sure the audio is quality and try to find somebody with a larger following to help get boosters and get your channel off the ground. Kelly Laughlin, thank you very much for speaking to me today. Thank you, Andrew, so much for having me on your podcast. <laughs>